you playing? Hello, and welcome to What the Bleep Are You Played? A podcast where we play a game many times bad and tell you why the bleep we played it. I'm Cinema Sean. This is Action Flick Thomas. And would you like butter with that? Mason. And today, we're doing a countdown list. Whee! We're going to count down our top five video games that should be movies. This is very exciting. Because we, because we did our top five movies that should be video games, so... Might as well go the other way. This is make, make, Making the list was fun on its own, but I'm also very fun. It's also very exciting to hear what you guys are going to say. Uh, I mean, in fairness, Mason will not be able to say cats for this one, so... <laughs> What is it? Oh, all right, all right, Mason. What's your number one? Go vacation, mother. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I've got it all cast out. I've got, I've it, got all it all. It's Chris Pine. Out. Chris Pine's the main lead. Hey, Hachi. What? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna. Jesus. There have been many, many, many video game movies, and seeing that we are a podcast that talks about a lot of bad things, many of the video game movies have been bad. But we're going to propose five that we would like to see made into movies hopefully good. Yes. You know, my, the, a couple on mine, they probably wouldn't even oh, be good. I just want to see that see it attempted. That's fair. Most of mine I'd like to think would be good. They probably wouldn't be some of them, but I'd like to think, like, in a perfect world, I would like these movies to be good. Well, uh, probably not. To set a couple of rules, kind of, that we have on it. Uh, one thing is you can do, we may have franchises that have movies but do not have the specific games. Uh, that is something that we said uh, that we're going to do, and we're not. We're only doing movies here. We're not saying if they would be TV shows. We're just mm -hmm. doing mm -hmm. movies. So, yes. uh, so if someone was like, man, I could be a movie, but I would love a TV show. Well, maybe that'll be a, a future list where we talk about things that we're could be shows. We're talking about TV shows. And TV shows that could be games. Who knows? Who knows? We might, we might extend it out. Add uh, to the classics, such as 24, the game. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, Lost via Dominos. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Or CSI, the game. God, jeez. <laughs> for the Wii. That was for the fucking Wii. <laughs> why, are these, why are these things? Because people bought them. Hey, look. Look, there's them. the X-Files PS2 game where majority of the game you're just doing dissections. Oh, gross. Also... You're on your phone and you're doing dissections. Oh, so like modern day science classes in high school. <laughs> Except somehow uh, worse. Yeah. Anyways, I so I don't think we discussed prior to this who we did who we decided was going to start. Did we? Nope. Uh, Mason, go ahead and kick us off. All right. Uh, uh, okay, I'll go ahead and start. Um, so I have a very uh, specific sense of humor. Yes. There are certain there, there's uh, certain things that uh, that make me laugh over the over others, and one of my favorite types of humor is just dumb humor. Even even when it's not done well, I can still find, I can still find humor in in the dumbest of things. And no video game franchise do I think embodies dumb humor more than Duke Nukem. <laughs> actually, uh, never. I, I have you ever seen the short film Duke Nukem, like uh, One Bad Day or something like that? No, I haven't. I forget what it's called, but it was a little short film posted to YouTube around the time Duke Nukem Forever was coming out. And it actually was fantastic. Was it live action? Yes. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, it was taken very seriously, which isn't the tone I'd want for a Duke Nukem thing. Right. But it, it's really good. I'll show you it after the podcast. Like, I... There, there are people that don't really like the Duke Nukem humor as much as others, but I find it hilarious. And... That's why we're not talking about the most recent Duke Nukem games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean... No. But no, the classic stuff is great. It's It's hilarious. So I would I would I would love to see that in in movie form. Well, in your perfect world, who is who is playing Duke Nukem? The first name that came to that came to my t to the top of my head was uh, Dolph Lund Dolph Lund Lundgren. <laughs> like, for some reason, I don't know why. I just feel like that would fit. I mean, I could see that in the eighties. Yeah, <laughs> in old man Dolph. But you know, we're we're gonna we're gonna use a time machine and go make this in the eighties. Yeah, go make this in. The oh, 80s. it's gonna be yeah, a sequel to Street Fighter the movie. <laughs> yeah, we didn't say what? they had to be the most <laughs> unintentional funny movie of all time. No, that's fair. We didn't say they had to be modern movies. That's fair. That's fair. That is fair. <laughs> Mason's actually, going back to 95, 85 and making this movie. And making this. Actually, if, before Duke Nukem was even a thing. Before yeah. Duke Nukem, before, <laughs> then they have to copy Mason. Yeah, before Duke Nukem 3D was even a thing. <laughs> I think the 2D games have been out by I that point. I've been out by that point, yeah, Maybe. possibly. 
So that's my first one, is Duke Nukem. I, I, I like it. I would love to see Duke Nukem in I, in I actually film. would really like to see that. Like, that'd be very funny. Plus, Duke Nukem has pretty good uh, shooting action, so... All right, Thomas, what's your number five? Number five, I went basically the exact opposite of Mason's direction. I was like, for some reason, kids franchises seem to transition the best to films between Sonic the Hedgehog, Detective Pikachu, and it looks like the new Mario movies at mm-hmm. least going to be pretty And fun. even even ones that maybe aren't good movies, they still look fine. The Ratchet and Clank movie looked fine. Yeah. So my idea, take a kids franchise from... The PS1 days, make it into a fun movie, a movie that I think would be a lot of fun, Ape Escape. Nice. Ooh. Yeah. I think an Ape Escape movie would be really cute. I think it'd be really Interesting. fun. Interesting. I'd be down. I, I, man, I wouldn't have thought of that in a million years. Now, since we're doing, like, different time periods, my in my perfect world... Ape Escape is like an early 2000s 2D animated movie mm-hmm. that probably would have bombed in the box office but would have been a cult classic. <laughs> With kind of like that mixed CGI look background feel to it. Yeah. 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 Where they were just kind of figuring out that kind of 2D, 3D hybrid type of stuff. And as for casting, uh, no. <laughs> like I like I, I didn't think of the casting. Chris Pratt before. is all of them. <laughs> but it's the 90s where he wouldn't be an actor. <laughs> uh <laughs> Well, yeah, I'd, I'd be down to watch an Ape Escape movie. Yeah. I would absolutely. That would be fun. Like I said, I, I think it'd just be kind of cute. I like, think so. Um, I, I think, I mean, obviously it could very well end up bad because mm-hmm. monkeys are very much a source of just stupid humor. It could just end up being minions. Yeah, but I also think that uh, if done really well, it could actually be like a really funny, really well-made movie. Absolutely. Like, I think you could actually get some really good writing specifically out of the main character Spike and his kind of interactions with the monkeys. Mm-hmm. And just and you have a lot of creative freedom in that franchise to kind of do your own kind of a little bit through it, but also still keeping true to it. Yeah. Kind of along the vein of what they've done with the Sonic movies. Yeah, pretty much. And like I said, it being like this kind of 2D animated but mixed with CGI thing, like an early 2000s uh, kids movie, I think it would have been like really good. That would be really interesting. I wouldn't, yeah, like I said, I wouldn't have thought of that at all. But, but hey, I'd even take a modern uh, kids movie, like a modern CG kids mm-hmm. movie, especially because they're going more stylized with CG movies nowadays, mm-hmm. so I think, it'd, mm-hmm. I think it'd be good. Well, yeah, from one franchise to another, my number five, uh, I, I think we can all get behind the story of someone accepting the call and going on the hero's journey to save his people. I'm, of course, talking about Spyro the Dragon. Uh, From one PS1 franchise to another. another. And I think, while you probably would want to make small changes and things like that, it is a very simple, easy story that you could tell and have fun of a young kid that doesn't know anything learning his lessons as he goes along as trying to save everyone and all the other dragons. And you know know what? Uh, Look... No, nothing against uh, the Skylanders franchise, but I feel like Spyro has been stuck in Skylanders for mm-hmm. way too long. So I feel like a like a, a solo Spyro movie that could then maybe even get its own tie-in game would, if it, if it's successful enough, could Bring be back able Elijah to, Wood <laughs> could, would be able to like break him Funny from. Funny uh, you say that there was going to be yeah. a Spyro the Dragon movie that tied into the trilogy with Elijah Wood. Yep. No way. A lot there of it was going to be Spyro in it. The uh, and look, I mean, no offense to those games. Thank fucking god that didn't happen at the time. <laughs> considering what the game that that trilogy was, yeah, I think I would. Like I said, go back to the original. You're you're. It's a coming of an age story. You know, you have a couple goofy sides to kicks very easily. You, you whether you decide to give Sparks voice like they do later, you have fairies, you bird sheep for fun. You can have you can add in as you save dragons. You can have dragons actually following you and helping you. There, there's lots of things you he, he, he can do to have it in there. But at, the, at its core, it is just a kid accepting the call to become the hero. Yeah. Now, would you make this 2D or 3D animated? I think I'd want it 3D, kind of along the style of what Puss in Boots is doing. So uh, in my, in my kind of the modern Puss in Boots, but I would not be opposed to a 2D uh, animated. So, because the only reason I brought that up is because the Reignited Trilogy happened. Mm-hmm. And that one 
you know, looks perfect. Yes. Like, genuinely, I think if you up the textures a bit, that's a perfect look. So. Absolutely. Uh, I think I think I'd be down with any style. Uh, the big thing is just nailing how you would adapt a game that has a good story but isn't necessarily a cinematic story. How you would adapt it to a cinematic feel would be the big thing for it. But yeah, that yeah. That would be the main thing, and then getting the voice of Spyro down correctly would be yeah. important. Honestly, just bring back Tom Kenny. Yeah, bring somebody <laughs> back. Who, yeah, yeah, Tom Kenny did Spyro. Did you not know I that? I did not yeah. know that. That's yeah, amazing. Spyro. Yeah, bring that's, back, bring back, hilarious. or just find a good, solid voice the same way. I think we're probably going to reference it a lot because it is a good movie franchise that's done right. Just, if you if you nail Spyro like you nail Sonic the Hedgehog, you're good. Yeah. That's yeah, that's yeah, because Ben Schwartz is a really good Sonic, yep. even though he's not who I'd imagine. Mm-hmm. So even if even you if he's not the Tom best, Ken- as long as you it, it, even you if you don't it. even if you don't get Tom Kenny, just get someone who like nails that feel, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. sort of like in a lot of like Ben Schwartz. Yeah, yeah, in a lot of ways, just like Sonic, ben because Schwartz. in the way they portrayed Sonic in the movies, he's more of a kid, uh, a kid growing up and coming of age as he's growing things. It's a very similar idea to how you would portray Spyro, but that is my fifth. So, Mason, on to your number four. So, I like a good mystery film. As we I, all do. That I think, yeah, as, 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 we all, as I think we all do. Some of my personal favorites are like, you know, the, uh, the Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes movies, or like Catch Me If You Can with Leonardo DiCaprio, movies like that. So, I, tried, so I wanted to think of a, uh, a good mystery game that would, that would kind of embody movies like that, and... Uh, the one that I that I ended up going with was L.A. Noir. That's what I was thinking. And that's yeah. really good. Because that yeah, it's 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 because mm-hmm. pro- like a, and then another one that I, w- I wanted to go with like the easy choice, but it's like a game that's already pretty cinematic mm-hmm. and I think would be pretty pretty easy to translate into a film. And I would I would really love I would just really love an L.A. Noir movie because I I love the mm-hmm. '40s era. I love that that aesthetic. Yeah, that I I like fedoras. I, Milady. I, li- I like for, I like oh. cars from the forties. I I like that that era. So so you you just like that kind of noir esque style with the, yeah with the over the top narration, the harsh shadows, the dark. Yeah, exactly. And and the and the uh, the cool thing about that uh, the, about doing that would be you know we've been talking about how we would cast these. You could very easily. Translate the actors into a li- into a live action movie because that's pretty much what they did. Mm-hmm. Is they you can is, easily is easily perfect find the... easy roles, people taking similar roles, or just actors that are similar to what was uh, portrayed in the game. Yeah, but in a in a perfect world, I would like to get like everyone that was in the game in the movie. Ah, so you just want uh, uh, what is it, Crime Boss, the the game with all that. <laughs> yeah. So you just want all that. <laughs> hey, look, Chuck Norris. <laughs> Vanilla Ice. <laughs> Looking through on IMDb, none of the ac- none of the actors that I saw in the in the game were that of that caliber. But mm-hmm. you know, yeah, right. But you can easily, you easily find and pull some back, and and a pretty good. That's the first one that of uh, the us that would absolutely ha- live action would work. Yeah. I mean, Duke Nukem. Live, you think live action, but also you could easily do Duke Nukem in a 3D, more adult uh, 3D animated. This is the first one that you're like, yeah, I want this yeah, to be live action. This needs yeah. to be live action, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Ah, I like it, Mason. Two for two, actually. No cats yet. No, no cats. vacation. We're good. <laughs> All right, Thomas. Give it time. Are you going to be basic? <laughs> I mean, I, kind of my whole... My list is very basic, so... I was going to say, my list is kind of basic. I'm actually stealing Sean's thunder a bit here because I'm going with an RPG. Huzzah! Um, <laughs> so, when it comes to RPGs, I'm not the biggest RPG guy, but I can acknowledge when they have good stories... And stories that I think would translate well into film. And there's a lot that could translate well into film. You know, uh, Chrono Trigger, I think, could translate well. Very much. I think the only problem you'd run in with Chrono Trigger is that the main character is just such a fill-in-the-blank. Yeah. That'd be the Uh, only thing, but that's something you can pretty easily fill in the blank with somebody. Pretty much, yeah. But also you could do, you know, Fantasy Star Mm -hmm. or even XCOM, I think, would make it good. You could probably do XCOM. But... None of those are the ones I picked. I picked the franchise you all think of when you think of RPGs. I picked Final Fantasy. <laughs> and specifically, the one I want to see translated into a film most, Final Fantasy IX. Yes! 
Interesting. Oh. Wow, I'm surprised. I'm surprised no. you got to Final Fantasy before Sean did. That's a good because well, because Final higher on, higher on, on Sean's list. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. yeah, but no, that's a great choice. I was not expecting nine because nine is one of my favorite stories because mm-hmm. I mean it, it's kind of like eight. We're at the heart; it's a romance, but at the same time, there's so much going on. Mm-hmm. I like the character. Nine is my favorite story in the franchise. I'm just telling that now. It, it has my favorite characters in the franchise. I love Zidane. Mm-hmm. I love uh, the rest of the. I love the rest Garnett, of the, the love Garnett. interest, I the love princess. V, I love VV. VV is. I fucking love VV. So Top five Final I mean, Fantasy characters. And just, just genuinely, it might be one that's better for a TV show, but I think because it is also kind of a simple story mm-hmm. that just has deeper elements rather than being a really complex story, mm-hmm. I think it would be. I think it would translate really well to. A two and a half, maybe even three hour, like epic. Yeah, uh, like, you know, or even a two part movie. You could do something along the lines like Kill Bill. Yeah, did you know one and two, like, like and uh, like and uh, part one on one of the big cliffhangers of the game because it has plenty. But also, I think that game would resonate. Uh, story would very much resonate with people. Uh, that game is one that you can insert any misfit outcast. Yeah. Whether that's because of how you are, that is your sexual orientation, your race, whatever it is, you can insert yourself to any of these characters because that character is so much about you are more than what you are on the outside. I mean, that's not only a heavy element with VV. Mm-hmm. Like, again, just a heavy element. God, VV's so good. VV's so but, good. But Zidane, but Zidane, the main character, mm-hmm. he's a thief. Mm-hmm. He's he's a, he's a sky yeah, pirate. He uh, he riff raff street rat. I don't buy that. Yeah. That's that's Zidane. He's Aladdin basically. But <laughs> but yeah, just imagine kind of a basically the live action Aladdin but done well. Yeah. is kind of what I imagine <laughs> for uh, Final Fantasy IX, but just with more epic sword fights and all this kind of stuff. I mean, not necessarily like, but but yeah, I I think Final Fantasy IX would be the, my go to. To that Final Fantasy. I would absolutely be down to watch that. Yay for Thomas. <laughs> I got, I got yeah. one. <laughs> I mean, part of me was like, man, I wish I had a fighting game coming up next. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> just stealing thunder left and right. But, uh, uh, so my number four is my biggest stretch in this, this category. Simply because, look, there are a lot of Resident Evil movies. But yeah, but none of them are good. None, none of, them of them are, are Resident, Resident Evil, Evil Four. I knew you were going to yeah, say that because I that is because knew it is. We're going to well, yeah, it, Resident Evil Four is my number four game of all time. So right. <laughs> uh, it is my. I absolutely adore that game, and it is so divorced from the rest of the franchise that it does not. It can be separate from any other Resident Evil movies, TV shows, whatever has been made, and be its own thing. You know what you could do with a Resident Evil Four movie. Do what people thought that life movie was going to do. Yeah. Where, like, it's advertised as just something else entirely. But then you get it and you're like, wait, his name's Leon. Wait, that's a TV. <laughs> oh, shit, this is Resident Evil. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think that'd actually be kind of cool. But because that game, I, the Resident Evil games, especially 4 and beyond, became huge cinematic events. But I think something of that game, it already, the story very easily boils down to... Search, find, puzzle, get through things, survive. Search, find, puzzle, get things, survive. And I think you could easily make a pretty e- a good act of get to Ashley, save Ashley, keep Ashley, defeat the cult. Like a very easy basic. There's a lot in there, but you, it's a pretty basic story when you boil it down. But it's the elements around it that make the story really work. And I think they would work really well in a film experience. And I also oh, argue yeah. Resident Evil 4. Sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I argue Resident Evil 4 is not too cinematic mm-hmm. because like so you cancel out freedom yes because part of the problem with adapting say resident evil 6 for example mm-hmm. is that it goes so fucking far over mm-hmm. yes <laughs> where there's like explosions every minute uh car chases through the city it's basically like if michael bay cloned himself and directed a resident evil movie because there's just that much resident evil 4 is more down to earth mm-hmm. ironically which is because they did not they did not advertise it as a Resident Evil game for a while. Yeah. And then when they said it was one, they said it has nothing to do with Umbrella. It's its own. They, they, they kind yeah, of advertised it, really it as their own. And it doesn't. I mean, yes, it does in the end. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like. Because, 
I say, inclusion, but... I say Resident Evil 4 is the down-to-earth when you end that game by firing a rocket launcher at a giant eyeball creature. Yes. But it's still more down-to-earth than 6. It got more down-to-earth than 5. Yeah. Uh, Even though I... Look, maybe it's because I love a good cheesy action movie. I love Cl- I Climax. Oh, five, look... One day we may all sit down and stream five together because that is a co co op experience. Mm-hmm. But and that's the best thing. I, but four is the only one that I sit down and I say because it does. You could easily take out the umbrella or the other Resident Evil stuff, and it could be a one movie thing. Yeah. Or if you then want to make sequels that have nothing to do with Resident Evil that we know, you could do that because that game ends very simply. Yeah. It it ends. In an action movie way, it ends with Leon and Ashley riding yes. into the sunset, with Ashley offering to give him a reach around, <laughs> <laughs> a nightcap, <laughs> yeah, nightcap. Right? Uh, but yeah, that I, I think would very much work. The problem is, I uh, my only problem in all this is I don't trust people to adapt Resident Evil movies. Not anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they, I, yeah. You can when turned, your best so one times. is the Raccoon City one that came out, <laughs> and that's still not a good movie. Uh, but I would love to see a good Resident Evil four. Uh, adaptation, and considering that we're getting the remake of the game coming out soon, now's the time to strike. But you have to watch it with the chainsaw controller in hand. That's how you operate the DVD. And we're bringing it back around. <laughs> Look, I want the chainsaw controller, Mason. I, I sent Sean a tweet that was like four weird-ass controllers. He was just immediately, I want all of them. I want them all. <laughs> Give me all the weird controllers. All right, Mason. What do you got as your number three? So, I feel like this is a, a situation that we've we've all been in, uh, where we had where we're we're in the shower and we have the shower thought of casting ourselves into a certain movie. I can't be the only one who's had that thought, right? Yeah, sure. Okay, so you're the only one who's had less that. as an adult, more <laughs> as a, more as a child, you know, younger. But you but know, there, you're younger. Yeah, there was younger. there's there's always been one that consistently. I've always I've always thought of, of casting myself in, and that is a Mega Man X movie. <laughs> I would love a Mega Man X movie. <laughs> would you do it? Would you do a 3D? Would it be a 3D? It would be a live. It would be a live action. You're gonna do a full live action. Oh. A live action Mega Man X movie. Ow. Oh. I. What do you mean? Ah, oh, I thought it would be. I think it'd be good. <laughs> we knew it. Mason would go off the rails at one point on this list, and I think we found it. <laughs> I didn't think his that... live action Mega Man X movie. I didn't think that would be the one to go off the rails. I I just I, I yeah I don't like the idea of live action Mega Man. X. Yeah, that's Damn. just a me thing. I, 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 I mean, if you're going to translate one to live action, it should be X because it has the more realistic character proportions. It's got kind mm-hmm. of the darker story. If you're going to translate any to live action, it should be X. I just don't think any should be live action. <laughs> that's just a personal thing. Uh, all right, you know what? It won't. It won't be live action. It'll be. Uh, it'll be Robert Zemeckis style motion capture. Oh, that, somehow you made it worse. Somehow, <laughs> somehow you made worse. it worse. <laughs> somehow worse. Go back to live action. Uh, but I. I. I uh, but I also thought of what a, a, a different, a, like a an actual cast for this one would be. For for my my Mega Man X, uh, I thought of uh, uh, Noah Schnapp. Who is one of the kids from Stranger Things? Mm-hmm. Uh, for Doctor Light, Kurt Russell. Okay, I like then, that casting. And then That's for and I then, like that casting. And then and now it gets better for Doctor Wiley, uh, Christopher Lloyd. <laughs> I think that would be fantastic. They're only going to be in the movie for like five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Fair. All right. So yeah, that's that's my Mega Man X movie. Please, someone, for the love of God, make it. I don't. Th- I, I, again, I don't. Th- I don't think this would be very good, but I still want to see it happen because I think it could be. Subreddits. I would really like to see a Mega Man any kind of movie, mm-hmm. but they're making that stupid ass fucking live action one. Mm-hmm. They, they are. are? Yeah, yeah, they're making a live action Mega Man movie. Oh, so fun! It'll probably be worse than what you're thinking. It probably will be. Maybe it'll be better. Who knows? I. I, I have my doubts, but yes, I have no faith. Like Yeesh. the minute they were like live action Mega Man movie, I'm like. I I, I mean, I could see. Uh, do you remember that uh, animated Astro Boy movie that came out yes. in 2000? Yeah. That yes. would be that kind of like that that style would, with a Mega Man. Mega Man. That would be, I would be fully 100 percent behind something like that. That would be fantastic. Uh, even if it diluted the Mega Man story down a bit and just kind of had fun with it, I could be I could be behind that. Yeah, that would be fun. I mean, the Mega Man story is 
very simple. Mega Man is. X is a more complicated mm-hmm. story, which I think that means it would translate better into a film. Mm-hmm. But you know, who knows? you're just trying to build more and more to the Smash universe. Exactly. Huh. Exactly. <laughs> you know, eventually, who knows? It might happen one day. Probably not. Mm-hmm. Soon. <laughs> it's going to happen like 2046 or whatever. When it does, it will be fantastic. <laughs> Anyways, all right, Thomas. What's your number three? Okay. Well, now I've done RPGs. I need to cleanse myself. <laughs> I'm going back to my domain, uh, a fighting game. And there's going to be a fighting game as a cheesy action film. Kind of, maybe. Oh, okay. I mean, maybe. Who knows how they do this? But uh, we've had plenty of fighting game movies. We've had Street Fighter. We've had Mortal Legend Kombat. Of Chun-Li. We've had multiple. We've had multiple Mortal Kombat. Three Mortal Kombat. Kombat's, two Street Fighters. A, a Dead had, or Alive. A Dead or Alive. A King of Fighters. A Tekken. A Tek- three Tekkens. Oh God! I only wanted to think about the first one, and it was bad. <laughs> oh, the other two aren't much better. No, although they're animated. So. Eh. There've been so some good animated Street Fighter movies. We, so oh, there's some good animated. We've had a lot of, of fighting. We've game We've had a lot movies. of fighting game movies, but one fighting game that has not gotten a movie that I think would translate into either one of the dopest or one of the most bonkers movies ever made is Killer Instinct. Yeah. Yeah. Why has Wow? I haven't thought about Be- that. Like. Be- it's not as big, so I guess maybe that's why nobody's. Yeah, but at that point, but yeah. like. When you look at the cast of Killer Instinct, not even the plot, just the cast, it's the main characters, this fucking battle monk dude, there's a werewolf, there's a skeleton pirate, there's a boxer dude. It's such agent. a diverse cast. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a fucking ghost chick straight out of the grudge and she holds a goddamn samurai uh, spear thing. Sheesh. And like... You could do so much with the Killer Instinct IP. Just make it... Again, am I expecting a perfect movie? No, I'm not. But I think just giving me a fun, balls-to-the-walls action movie would, I think, be perfectly good. Hell, make the final battle like Shadow Jago or something. Jago versus Shadow Jago. Nothing great, but like it would be... I think it'd be very good, very entertaining. That is it. Yeah, that's that's. I. I. Why, man? That would be something that. I, the The question I think for a lot of it is how they probably would need a big actor to try to, uh, get the box office return Currently, for it. And my one concern about this is they do what they did with Mortal Kombat twenty twenty one and create where, their own and create their own character. Probably have a big name after flame. Hey, it's Jack played by Chris Pratt or whatever. Or it's it's Jacob played by Keanu Reeves. Look, if you're like, gonna but if you're gonna create an OC for your movie, which is fine. If you wanna do that for fighting, that makes sense, but you can't make him bland. That, that's a that's you can't a make him blander than so bread. Cole from Mortal Kombat twenty twenty one is so goddamn boring. <laughs> and literally like And you give him some billy clubs. You gave him Billy Clubs and like the lamest goddamn ability. Yep. What's his ability? He gets his ass beat. That's his ability. Is he gets his ass beat. Oh, I really don't like that movie. I like the Scorpion Sub Zero parts. I like the Sub Zero parts. Because, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, no, that's a lie. I like when it's actually focused on the Mortal Kombat characters. That's fair. But most of the movie is focused on Cole. So I'm just like, son of a bitch. But Killer Instinct. My, my, my thing is Killer Instinct and Mortal Kombat have kind of the same thing where the main character itself is kind of the bland self-insert. Mm-hmm. Liu Kang and Jago, they're kind of the blander self-inserts. Jago has a bit going on. Yeah. But, again, he, I think, already makes a good kind of self-insert but still has enough going on main character. Again, that's what the 90s Mortal Kombat did with Liu Kang, so I think that's what a Killer Instinct movie could do with Jago. Mm-hmm. But... They just decided to make their own character, and I'm worried they do the same with Killer Instinct. That's fair. Or do what they did with Reptile and just make like one of the coolest characters, say Saber Wolf, just kind of a jobber. Man, do I want this movie? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the Thomas concept. has clearly thought about this one, have, and this is his number three. I think you may have just like talked yourself out of this. Okay, look, the concept I still think would be good. I think you could very easily do at least a cool as hell. If not necessarily good, but at least a dope as shit, Killer Instinct. Mm-hmm. 
Like, just give me some good bloody fights. Give me a at least decent story. End it with Jago versus whatever the main villain of Killer Instinct is. I think it's... I forgot. Shit. I should have probably done more research. I'm sorry. Nah, you're good. You're but, good. I mean, it, it's a franchise that I think could work. Uh, it, it really depends on what direction they go to and who they'd cast in a lot of the roles. That would be the yeah. big thing for it. I mean, but d- me personally, I prefer they kind of cast a couple no names Mm -hmm. like you can cast big name actors for like kind of the side characters but you want the mains to be more i want the mains to be kind of um no names like uh tj combo i don't know cast fucking uh Oh, God damn it! What's the name of the guy who played Jax in Mortal Kombat? Oh, that really guy, good. yeah. I know you're talking about, but yeah. Because he did really good. He was really good. Or, uh... Or Jai White. Jai White, I think, would be really good. Uh, okay. Good combo. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, Jago, I think, should be kind of... Uh, just a no-name. Orchid, maybe. And, of course, the villain. The villain, you could also make a big name. Cause, yeah. 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 Like, uh, Street Fighter the movie... It was mm-hmm. Raul Julia who would start a lot of people. Greatest final performance in a bad movie ever. Oh, man. He, he gave his all. <laughs> he was dying movie. literally while making the film, Jeez. and he gave everything. Because that man did not know how to not He did not, how to go, not know how to go uh, uh, half. <laughs> anyway, I've talked enough about Killer I, I think the thing I was saying for this is any fighting game, it will always depend on how the director or how the story wants to go because there is a lot of freedom in the fighting games, and there are lots of stories that you can choose from. But it, it all depends on how you make them balance. And the problem is a lot of times they don't make them balance. Yeah. So There's either too much action or not enough. Mm-hmm. And admittedly, that is a very hard balance to get with a fighting game movie. Definitely. Well, kind of in the same vein, but not 100%. Uh, side-scrolling beat-em-ups. Hmm. You would think would make pretty good game, get pretty good movies. I mean... You would think they could, because usually the, 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 the premises of the beat-em-ups are something has been kidnapped, we need to go get it. All right, yeah, that's fair. I, that, there's, I guess there's enough there. There's enough movie. usually in a lot of those. And then they tried it with Double Dragon. Yes. <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of it is just try to, you know, take the premise of Die Hard, but make it, you know, a little more beat em up, a little more of those sort of things, and you're trying to get to a location and, and, and get out of wherever you are. Well, there's a beat em up that I love. Absolutely love. Battletoads. Uh. <laughs> Is this gonna be? Is this gonna be like animated? Or is it gonna be like Bay Turtles, where they're like big and CG and weird? I think you could do a, a live action with the hybrid, but you've got to make sure the CG looks fine. Right. Uh, yeah. I think I probably would prefer it more animated. Maybe Avatar: The Last Airbender uh, style, kind of the way they did, uh, the, where it's kind of faux anime. Mm. Uh, you know. Well, I. I can see, but I could I could fully get behind a, a live action where they're you, the CG characters are kicking people's asses. Uh, <laughs> I could fully get behind it. My, my only thing with making Battle Toads is that they have these cartoony powers where yes. they make these big fists and these big boobs. Which is kind of where animated I think would work better. Yeah, because that would work more in animation. Uh, also, it would have to, it would have to be five hours long because it would have to be one segment devoted to that damn hoverboard section <laughs> that they could never get through. No, you just see the the fun thing about the game is you never get to finish the movie because you can't beat the game. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last scene is that they keep crashing and then it's to be continued. You could do something <laughs> funny along the lines, kind of in the same what what the Doom movie was trying to do in theirs was with the the with, when you die and he died and came back to life. You know, he had a life. <laughs> you could do something really. Funny of like maybe they're repeating something over and over again and they can't get it right. You could do a lot of fun, but also that Battletoads is very comedic and silly. Uh, it's 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 a very similar cast of characters to something like Star Fox, but instead of you know shooting things, you're punching you're things. You're punching the shit. You know what it reminds me of? What I think I never actually watched it, but did you ever watch the Legend of the Hidden Temple movie? Yes, it's not particularly great. There was, but... a, there was a what? Yes. Yeah, there was like a straight to Nickelodeon movie. Mm-hmm. I never watched okay. it, but it had one gag that was really good because no one could ever put together the silver monkey statue. Mm-hmm. Right. So there's a gag where it's like, all right, we need to put this together. And it's like four hours later and they're just tired. They're like, what the fuck do we do? Like they're just frustrated to hell. I think that would be a good gag, but do the 
the hover bike uh, section from Battletoads, <laughs> where it's like, all right, here we go, like, 12 hours later. Oh, my God, we're still here. <laughs> Legitimately, it would be, uh, if they did animation, I'd want... Are two man, you know, because you primarily play two toads. There are a lot of other characters. You primarily play your two characters, but I'd like I'd like your characters to be wisecracking. I'd like them to be silly. So if we're animating, legitimately, this is one of the times where I'd be like, Ryan Reynolds actually would be good in one of these. <laughs> yeah, like Ryan Reynolds as uh, Zitz or whatever. Yeah, like Zitz, like Zitz and Pimple and, and, and yeah, yeah. those. Yeah, one of those sort of things. Uh, but if you had a second one as well, this is actually another place where another actor I usually don't like, where actually someone like Vince Vaughn would be hilarious as well, because they just are riffing off of each other. Yeah, uh, genuinely, like, casting comedic actors for this would be great. Would be really funny. I, I think, I, I don't know how good the movie would be, but a legitimately just, the, Battletoads isn't known for its story. Its story is not a whole lot. You're, you're, you're being sent out, and you're, you're saving the world. Oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think a faux Lego movie writing style would... Mm-hmm. I mean, I obviously wouldn't expect to be as good as the Lego movie, but that kind of self-aware, mm-hmm. kind of uh, bashing humor, but also very loving to its source material, I think would work really well. Would work well. very much. Even a little bit of what Detective Pikachu was, that, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. Didn't, yeah. It doesn't, doesn't take itself seriously, but also still is very serious to the franchise, Yeah, I think would work very well. I just think, think, it doesn't take itself seriously, but still has stakes. I, yeah. I, it's been able to be done, and I very much think Battletoads... Especially because of the freedom you'd have in it. Because a lot of times we'll run into, well, we have a story that already is done. So if we don't do that story right, <clears throat> Prince of Persia stands the time. It's going to be bad, you know. Uh, so, like, I think, or the Assassin's Creed movie, which was boring as all, all get up. God, like, those sort movie. of things. But I think movies like like what Sonic has done, what Detective Pikachu did, uh, those type of video game properties that are just having fun in the universe. Battletoads could very much jump right into that sort of thing. And you could just have fun. So there's there's three Battletoads altogether, right? I believe there's three. Uh, yeah, I believe there's, so. there's three, but you usually only play as two because there's yeah. only two players. So, okay, but if, you, if we're going to have all three together, we already have Ryan Reynolds... Who would the other two be? I said Vince Vaughn is one I would want. Like, it's, it's the rare Vince, Vince Vaughn. Vaughn. Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson. That's my three. <laughs> so, it would be a Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson comedy that Ryan Reynolds is in. Yes. <laughs> and they just happen to be. Ryan Reynolds is having to play the str- like the straight man and the other people are making it there. And that would actually force be Force Ryan funny. Reynolds to go against type. That actually that would, would be, very, be really Honestly, funny. I think he'd be for it. I think he could play a very yeah. funny straight man. So... Uh, that would be, a, but he's still his. It's his Ryan Reynolds sarcasm while yeah, I, being. I was gonna say like, but I being that, more I of the hard ass. I was gonna say I know that's kind of uh, doesn't go together, but like a very funny straight man can work, and I think oh, Ryan yeah. Reynolds could nail. I'm everybody. also just picturing one of the toes with Owen Wilson's voice, and I'm just and it's fucking hilarious. It's so yeah. hilarious. So. Uh, yeah, Battletoads, uh, I would like to see it attempted in some capacity. It probably would suck, but I legitimately would like to see it. All right, we're into the top twos of everyone, so here's the, only the best from here. So Mason, don't let us down. <laughs> oh boy. Well, uh, that, this is it's a little bit awkward now because I was going to open this one with this is the one that I thought would take me off the rails. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> uh, this is Go the one that I, isn't it? This is the one that I thought you were all going to to uh, uh, look at look at me funny with. Um, so I wanted to do I wanted to lend guitar myself. hero. <laughs> That's one of my honorable mentions. Uh, so I wanted. What the, the fuck would the movie be? I, I will get to that in a second. <laughs> it's Battleship, like it's the Battleship movie. You're fighting aliens. I will, with guitar. I will, I will actually guitar. get to that. It'll be. It'll be. It'll all make sense when I get to it. Trust me. But uh, okay. I don't. So I wanted to limit myself to one Nintendo property, but I I also didn't want to do one that is still getting entries. But it's one that still many people hold near and dear. So I went with Punch Out. I'd actually very much be down. Yeah, I'd be I down. Was. Like I, I don't. I mean, it probably would be kind of Rocky style. So like what they did with Real Steel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was gonna say Real Steel, but again, just kind of, I, I would. That yeah. you're training to take down the big. He's training to take yeah. down the big person and having to go through all. Yeah, I, yeah I'd be down with Punch say, Out. Punch Out, I think would make a great movie. Yeah, I, I would. I would love. A, I would love a Punch Out movie. Uh, as my as my little Mac, I would like to nominate Daniel Radcliffe because <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe in a, in a boxing movie. I because that would be because yeah he, because yeah. he's a he, he he is jacked. Like if you guys if you've seen him in the Weird Al movie, he is jacked. But also 
he is five five. Mm-hmm. He is a small man, and so, he's sweaty. And so you're like, yeah. You, also, you, if you've watched Guns Akimbo, he can <laughs> he can play the dude who just gets his ass beat through most of the movie, but still ends up being a badass. That's the yeah exactly. So you, it, like that's that's kind of what I what I was thinking of as someone who is short but also jacked and could, and you know could. Get his get his ass kicked in an entertaining you way. You said this is the one that went off the rails. This is the one I want to see the most. Yeah, <laughs> like your legitimately. List. Yeah, this, this is not. There. This is not how I expected this to go. Also, uh, at, for um, uh, Doc, uh, I would like to nominate uh, Carl Weathers. I, th- I think he would be he would be perfect as, as oh my god, as Doc. That's great. That's amazing. <laughs> not only has he already been in a boxing movie, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. The thing is, Carl Weathers a lot of, like a lot of the stuff he works on now. He wants to direct as well. Like that's why he directs episodes of Mandalorian. Oh they, yeah. So you're you might be getting Carl Weathers the director too. <laughs> hey, you know what? He directed good episodes of Mandalorian. I think. What episodes of Mandalorian? <laughs> his his are been, been pretty good. Okay. Things like I didn't remember. Uh, so they, that's as far as I went. I didn't. I didn't cast all of the. Uh, all no. Of the boxers, look, but Mason. Top tier there. That was not all real. That was yeah. exactly the time of thing we were wanting. It. Well, no, uh, I don't know if he's dead, but, which will make this very sad if he is, but for Mr. Sandman, just cast the guy who played Zeus in No Holds Barred. Did anyone watch that? I I, I think so. I just don't remember who played it. I don't think I have. It's a, it's the really bad Hulk Hogan movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if he's dead or not, so that's going to be very That sad. would be... But anyway. If he's alive, please... But uh, I'm still I'm still trying to f- but. find. Oh, it's uh, Tom, Tommy Lister Jr. He died two years ago. Motherfucker. Oh, well, <laughs> almost. Wait, yeah, two years ago. Motherfucker. Well, 2020. Sadly. Well, R.I.P. Yeah, rest in peace, man. Uh, uh, but boxing movies are fun. Boxing movies are, are bo- good. Boxing and we don't have that many of them. The market is not really that saturated with them. They are just, you know. Yeah. At this point, the only big boxing franchise is Rocky slash Creed. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I, th- I think there is room for another Absolutely. boxing franchise. Like Punch Out or God the forbid only... if Real Steel 2 ever gets made. Yeah, uh, I mean, because Disney Plus series for that. There's, uh, yeah, there is. What the hell was that for? Uh, was Not that long ago. About, long ago, but yeah. Because um, mm-hmm. there was that, there's been a lot of like Oscar boxing type movies. Yeah. You know, like Million Dollar Baby, uh, yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal was in that one. Um, um, uh, Southpaw. Yeah, Southpaw. It's not, but, it's like, not boxing, but just Warrior. Fo- yeah, oh yeah, The Warrior. Yeah, but MMA movies are follow very similar to what boxing yeah, does. I mean, I love Warrior, though. Yeah, but... Yeah, that would fit in, because we just don't have a ton yeah. of boxing movies that are just for entertainment value, which is kind of what Rocky became, even though the first Rocky is definitely a drama. Oh, first Rocky is easily a drama. Drama, and, and, then, and the yeah. Creed and franchise to, has been leaned more to drama than and, and the, then the you get, goofy... And then you get to Rocky IV, which is, he's fighting the Russian super soldier. <laughs> <laughs> if he dies, he dies. Look, it's not good, I, but I fucking love Rocky IV. That's fair. I, look, I... I uh, I like all the Rocky films, so like more some more than others, but I don't dislike any of them. Uh, my dad likes all of them except one. My dad dislikes five. Oh, and, I thought you said he he doesn't like the the, the Rocky one. I was like, what? No, <laughs> my dad doesn't like five. Interesting. That's fair. Uh, I I've seen like one Rocky movie, and it's so have so I. I've only seen the first one. Though. I've been meaning to watch the others. They're fun. They're, they're all fun. kind of fall in the same vein, but they're all fun. Montage. I'm going to beat him now. I lost earlier. Montage, I'm going to beat him. <laughs> That's just basically the movies. You can be, you can be boiled down. I mean, I've only seen one movie. They fill in everything else. Rocky Creed franchise, and that's Rocky IV. But good Creed choice, Creed. Mason. Good choice. I was going to say, Punch Out's a really good choice. All right, Thomas, what's your number two? I cheated. Uh, oh. With number two, uh, I kind of cheated because I actually have two entries here as kind of a tie. Mm. All right, let's see. But I, the only reason I put them together was because they're both first-person shooters. Okay. And I just, I genuinely... I was like, some weird crossover movie gonna happen. No, I just, I genuinely could not choose between them. Looking back on it, I probably would have chosen one over the other, but they're both first-person shooters. They both even start with T. We have Time Splitters and Turok. Ooh. I think both of those would make for really good... Maybe like, very similar style movies. Yeah, very similar style, but also just really good sort of hardcore action movies, like... Not a lot of plot, but just a shit ton of action. 
Admittedly, kind of what they were trying to do with the Doom movie. Yeah, but you know, not the Doom movie. The, the, yeah. uh, it succeeds more than the Doom movie movie yeah. did at with that. The Doom movie has great casting with Carl Urban as Doom guy. Yep, that is great casting. But fuck, <laughs> yeah, 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 they really don't do anything with them. No, not really. But yeah, I I think Time Splitters or Turok. It, it, looking back at it, I probably would have leaned more towards Turok. I mean, fighting, uh, shooting dinosaurs. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> 65, yeah. baby. <laughs> but, um, genuinely, I think it would have made... I think both these games would make for really fun movies. Right? Yeah. I think Turok especially, I'm more leaning towards for the movie. Time Slayers, I think, would make a better television series, so I probably That's should have saved it for that. That's but, fair. But, uh, Turok has less story, so yeah. you're filling it in and doing your own sort of thing. So a movie makes more sense than, say, Time Splitters. Yeah. And Turok, I'm not usually the one to talk about representation on here, but also, when was the last time we had a Native American lead in a big-budget Hollywood movie? Uh, uh, Prey. Well, uh, Prey wasn't in theaters, though. It was That's fair. It still was pretty good-sized budget, but yeah, Prey would be the last but, yeah, thing. But, Prey, yeah. but, but, but before, before that, that, I not, can't really think of that. Yeah. The one I can think of is maybe Magnificent Seven. Uh, yeah. And, or, uh, and that's one of the seven leads in that movie. Uh, so, uh, uh, Legend of Chun Li. <laughs> She's not the lead, though. Moonblood, good. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, anyway, yeah. So, one I, one, I think it'd be a fun action movie, first and foremost. But also, it would be kind of cool to get a Native American hero on the big screen. Yeah. Help cast the guy who was in Magnificent Seven, because he did a really good job. Mm-hmm. Or cast some one of the dudes from Prey because all of them did, did good jobs too. Like again, first I just think it'd be a really fun movie. You know, it's this dude going around killing dinosaurs, shooting a bow and arrow at mercenaries while traveling through time. Like it'd be dope as hell. Yeah, done and right. It'd be, it'd be really really yeah. fun. And and especially because there are a bunch of comics you can also take influence from. It I think it'd be very good. But time splitters. Again, like I said, I think it'd probably make a better TV show. But if you're going for a movie, you know, there's a lot of really fun concepts. You basically do quantum leap stuff. You jump into the body of someone from the past. So that would be kind of funny to get, like, celebrity cameos in there. Like, how funny would it be if, uh, let's just say Vin Diesel, because the main guy looks a lot like Vin Diesel. (laughs) Uh, He goes into the time portal, jumps into the past to stop bad guys, and he jumps into the body of Danny DeVito or some shit. (laughs) And you have to see, like, Danny DeVito doing this gun kata shit, like, Frank Delivery. (laughs) Yeah, I'd watch that. I'd watch that. That would be hilarious. Holy crap. (laughs) And yeah, like, Time Splitters, like I said, I I think they'd make a better TV show. Mm -hmm. I've said that, like, a hundred times. But if you are going to make a movie, I think it would be pretty... I think it would be a fun movie. It probably get they'd probably try to make it overly complicated because it is time travel. But when you get down to a time splitter story, is very simple. We're going back in time to stop bad guys because bad guys are here in the future. It's an arcade game, yeah. yeah or initially, well, that is that that's time crisis. Oh, time right? No, time split. Time splitters had an ar- arcade. Was time game? splitters arcade? I thought the first time splitters was. Maybe oh, I'm thinking. Maybe, maybe I am. Maybe just, maybe it was. I'm maybe I'm sure. confusing with time I, crisis. Well, I, I know time crisis was, but I thought the first time. Sp- who knows? Maybe it was my my first, I my first like, exposure to time. Splitters I could be was, wrong. I could be entirely. I could be. I literally could be thinking my, time crisis. My first as well. ex, my first exposure to time splitters was Future Perfect, mm-hmm. which I have on the GameCube. Because I know the later ones obviously weren't, but I thought the original was. But I uh, who knows? Maybe you're right. That's my brain. Yeah, but but yeah, I think I think time splitters could also make a really fun. Mm-hmm. Again, really just just imagining Vin Diesel like imagine. Advertising it as an action movie with Vin Diesel as the leap of Vin Diesel's barely ended because he's always quantum leaping to another body. Another body all so, the time. It's, it's like it's and like it's, um, and it's always a new celebrity cameo. It's like, like uh, it's like when they advertise um, the, the the Sandra Bullock movie with 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 Brad Pitt and he was in a lot of the advertising and then he dies at the beginning. What's it called? The Lost City. Lost, Lost City. City. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you could maybe do stylized very similar that way they handled Free Guy with cameos and different people in it all the time yeah. that would be very very easy to do those sort of things like again imagine him jumping into Danny DeVito's body mm-hmm. or like uh, fuck who else would be really funny to jump into uh, Vin Diesel in The Rock's body oh <laughs> yikes oh, that'd be hilarious it would never happen but it'd be fucking we'll see if hilarious. they never had to film together That's never funny. had to be on set together <laughs> oof uh Woof! That Give him enough be... money. <laughs> that's that's fair. That'd be all the budget, though. <laughs> that would be all of the budget. 
it would make the money back though with that cast. Oh, it, it probably would. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a good. Uh, those are good ideas. Uh, first person shooters sometimes the translation problem of being first person for a lot of the game sometimes makes them in film. You know, you're not sure how you want to film some certain things, but that's why I went with uh, Tarak mm-hmm. and uh, Time Splitters because they do have defined characters. Exactly. Meanwhile, Call of Duty, which I know they're trying to make movies out of. The characters, they are defined specifically in like the Modern Warfare series, but for the most part, it's private. Private number two. Private dude. Like, that's that's just kind of the Call of Duty character. Yeah, that's fair. Very cookie. Yeah. Character. Yeah, exactly. All righty. Well, now we're going to get to my favorite time, uh, where I talk about my favorite franchise uh, a couple of times. Uh, my top King two are... It's going to be Kingdom Hearts, isn't it? No, no King Kingdom Hearts. Hearts Final I, I, am, I am very staunch that Kingdom Hearts should never be adapted to anything other than manga. Damn. So it's not Kingdom Hearts. It is not. It's, it's Final Fantasy. So close. <sighs> My number two. So, um, in 1997, when Final Fantasy VII came out, there was another Final Fantasy came, game that came out that same year. Final Fantasy Tactics. Which mm-hmm. kind of became a cult classic. It's it's different. It's technically in a different universe. Uh, technically, the the tactics universe ties in with twelve and Vagrant Story and a couple of other games because a different person working on it. Uh, this whole universe uh, and tactics is this big epic war Game of Thrones esque families battling over the church and supremacy uh, and monsters and destroying the world. So they. That game had a cult following. So in the early 2000s, they took that idea, Tactics RPG, and released Final Fantasy Tactics Advanced. A lot of people didn't like that game. It was actually my first introduction to Tactics. But this is why I would make it my number two movie and why I would like to see it more than I would like to see Final Fantasy Tactics adapted. Tactics Advanced follows a couple of small children at school. Your first your first tactic where they teach you how to do the mechanics of the game is a snowball fight that you're throwing oh. at people. Uh, and one of the kids in there is this picked on kid. And they open basically a book and end up, because this, this kid who was picked on, his wishes his dad was the hero of the world and all these sort of things and wants things to abide by his rules, creates another universe basically. Where these three kids are thrust into, Jeez. Uh, where they basically go into their other things, and the, you have to fight and eventually free your friend from this. The clutches of I finally have my life. I can. I am finally healthy. I can finally live my life. My dad is the most badass hero in this game. He's the judge master. Uh, it incorporated this thing called judges, uh, which. They put rules on each match matches, and you would get a basically soccer rules. You get a yellow card if you break the rule once, and you get a red card and eliminated from the map. So uh, rules and the rules would be something like you can't use magic this thing, or hey, you can't step on these things, or you are eliminated. Hey, if you attack a person with this weapon, uh, and they would get harder and weirder, and they made the combat added extra rules. The story is, is, is not hard. It, it's been done many times, but the idea of somebody who is struggling creating their own reality and the decision of, do we really want to pull him out? We want to get back home, but to do that, we have to stop our friend's fantasy, basically. And it Whoa. is a very deep, deep game with a lot, a lot of good storytelling mechanics. It was very cute graphics also. It was on the GBA. Uh... But that is why I think I would like to see that more adapted because I think you could make that easier. I know people would want the big, violent stuff, get your Game of Thrones type of uh, uh, action. I think I would like more of kind of the heartwarming story. Uh, And you could make it targeted, not necessarily targeted at kids, but it could be that everyone could go to because it could have that kind of action, good feeling, but also have a good message for family and kids as well. Uh, plus, it'd be a good vehicle for maybe some up and com- coming young actors to get a chance to star. It, it would, yeah. It, that, yeah, that's the plot description reminds me a lot of like the Never Ending Story yes. or the Kid yeah. Who Would Be King kind yes. of thing. Yeah. Uh, but the action, it's kind of weird. But I kind of think they should do like a Squid Games thing with it, where like there's a different stipulation mm-hmm. in each match. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. instead of actually doing the Squid Games where it's just a game, maybe like 
again, kind of weird, but you brought up soccer, so it was my idea. Shallon soccer kind of thing. <laughs> like, if you kind of, you could kind of format it that they're forced into these battles, but are more like chess with rules, but treating it more like a sport, but it actually has ramifications. Yeah, like, make it kind of, it kind of plays like a sports movie, but it's obviously not a sports movie kind of thing. I, I, I genuinely do think that would be a pretty good idea. I do like that idea a lot. That is, yeah, that Especially is a fantastic idea. I'm, I'm a sucker for the stories where kids get transported into a fantasy world. Mm-hmm. If done right, it's always it is super always cute and super fun. And I, I always like that. So, And part of the game is that the kid has semi-control over the universe and can manipulate things. And one of the things is his dad, who is the judge, starts realizing that something's not right. And that he's ruling these things and something's not right and trying to break through things like that I, I'm being forced into this reality. His dad in, in the world is a drunk, you know, and stays home and all these sort of things. And so he, he basically makes an idealized version of his dad that has to do all things. And he's like, something's not right here. I'm not who I think I am. Hmm. It's a really good story. It's a really interesting game. Uh, one that I'm really excited to pick up again. I haven't played it in oof, close to a decade again. When I, I played, I, I poured hours into it. On my on my Game Boy bef- Game Boy Advance before they had backlight, so you couldn't mm. see shit. <laughs> uh, so, but it was a uh, it was a great a great fun game that kind of gets maligned because it is very different from tactics, which is what everyone was expecting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alrighty, well we're down to our number ones. Uh, so usually before this we like to kind of like give a couple of honorable mentions and things that we were thinking about. So, Mason, what, what kind of honorable mentions did you have? Okay, so this is my chance to defend my Guitar Hero pick. Okay. Get it? Pick? Uh, I wasn't, yeah, that was unintentional. So, the, the only reason that I didn't actually put this on my real list is because I wanted to use a story that didn't end up actually getting used in a Guitar Hero game. There was, there was an idea for a story mode in Guitar Hero 3, Legends of Rock, uh called Rock Apocalypse, where basically this big, huge totalitarian uh, government takes over and bans all forms of rock music, and says, and they say that it all, all has to be destroyed. Well, then the, these little underground groups of rock musicians then use what, what they have left to then take down that government. So I think that would be a fantastic movie idea. I think it's just going to end up being Pick a Destiny. <laughs> it, I I just got reminded of like uh, outlaw rock. Oh, it's Footloose. <laughs> of, it's, no, yeah, it's, but it's okay, I'm down. I'm sold. Footloose. <laughs> uh, but also, you said Rock Apocalypse. My first thought was, oh shit, Brutal Legend. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's yeah. I should have put that in my the, in my the, the TV show Metal Metal Octopus. Yeah, that was <laughs> something like that. Metal Metal Octopus. <laughs> yeah, right? Metal Octopus. That's true. Uh, the si- spiritual sequel to the robot chicken. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then the one that I had um, after that was uh, it's a game that I, I, don't, I don't think either of you, of you guys have ever heard of, so that's why I didn't put it on my list. It's called Duck Season. Wabbit Season. And, <laughs> yeah, that was my first thought. So, so do, what, do, what Duck Season is, it's a VR game. And basically what it starts off as is VR Duck Hunt. You go in... And it's like, you're, the, you're this little kid who's given a VR headset with a VR duck hunt game in it. And you go in, and it's pretty much, for most of the game, is just a VR duck hunt uh, with a, a character in it that's the dog character, but it looks like a human in a dog, like, um, so mascot it's... suit. Yeah. Uh, and it's pretty much just a normal uh, VR duck hunting game until you decide to shoot the dog. Because when you shoot the dog, it takes a crazy right-hand turn turn where the dog comes out of the VR game and becomes a slasher movie villain, pretty much, and tries to kill you in real life. And I think that premise would be fantastic as a movie. Just simply taking the premise that a game, that something, a villain, something from a game that simple becomes a slasher Becomes movie. a slasher villain, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's that one. I was sitting there, I was like, how are we making this a movie? I see, I see how we're making it. I Got see, it. yeah. I was waiting for the twist, because I'm like, there's... Yeah, that, yeah that's something. the twist. Uh, so then going going um, uh, into games that you guys have probably actually heard of, Comic Zone, 
Mm -hmm. There's another one. I think that'd be a very good... uh, That was actually on my list for a while. Uh, Yeah, that's... Again, going back to the the 2D beat-em-up thing. Uh, The Sam and Max games. Please, for the love of God, can we get a Sam and Max movie? That would be amazing. I, uh, yeah. Because I think they w- they work off so well together, and if you got two mm-hmm. uh, two voice actors that works that could work off really well, I think that could be done. Uh, really I well. don't like when movies do this, but even just cast a celebrity as like kind of a third wheel and get the original voice actors for Sam. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, and then Monkey Island. Yeah. That one I'm surprised hasn't been. I'm surprised that hasn't been adapted in anything that I can think of. Don't doesn't Lucas Art well not Lucas Art anymore but Lucas Film own the rights to both of those still? Uh, I believe maybe not Sam and Max. But... I think well because Telltale was making the Sam and Max games for a while. Okay, so then I, I don't know, but I don't know who owns the cinematic but Monkey, rights. Monkey, but... Monkey Island, I think just got a new game, so I don't know because it may be someone can develop, but maybe the cinematic are owned by still because they, they were Lucas Art's games. So they were, yeah. They were. So like I don't know what all encompasses in that with Lucas Film. Uh, so then an, another one that's kind of like L.A. Noir that I think, um, would be the easiest to turn into a, to turn into a movie, uh, Life is Strange. Yeah. Then th- this one I, I didn't put into my, into my list because I know it's, it, like, it's still very early on, but I know they're, they're still trying to make this into a movie, so at some point in the future it might happen, and I didn't want to date this podcast, uh, Metal Gear Solid. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they're still trying to get that off, off the... On the I, there, there's it'll, definitely lots of thoughts to try and do. It'll totally happen. Oh, it's going <laughs> at to at some point. point. It'll, but I think they're still far, far off. Um, I mean, if they still had, if, if Konami still had Kojima in their court, you know, if they didn't <laughs> get all the things, Gilmore Del Toro would have made it, probably. <laughs> probably. Uh, so then, uh, like I said when I brought up Punch Out, I wanted to limit myself to one Nintendo franchise. I had two that I had in mind, but I eventually had to cut them out. It was Metroid and Legend of Zelda. Silent protagonist games. Yeah. Right, yeah, Metroid yeah. less than Zelda because yeah. Samus, Samus has spoken. Samus has yeah. spoken in several games. Yeah, they weren't great. Well, I mean, she was only voiced in one game and that wasn't great, but in other games she talks and it's it's good. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and then another, this is another one that I, that they're um, that someone is still working on. It's I think it's still far far off from being made, but uh, Minecraft. Not that I, far off. Is it not that far off? I believe it's on schedule next year. Is it? Re- oh, jeez. Jared Haas. Uh, Jared is it Haas? The guy who made Napoleon Dynamite. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. Um, Wasn't the Rock in that? He might be. I don't remember who's all in it. I, but thought, yeah. I thought they had had Jason Momoa attached to it. So oh, that, a, might yeah, that might be Jason. Momoa. That might be Jason Momoa. Momoa. It's well. It's still. I think. It, yeah. But yeah, that is happening. Uh, and then uh, I'm surprised we haven't gotten any sort of adaptation of Devil May Cry. There was a there was really an animated fun. movie, but that's about it. Yeah. Uh, there was there was an anime. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was like a twelve episode anime. It's decent. Mm-hmm. I take, but I I'd like a big budget Devil May Cry movie. Isn't isn't the studio that did the Castlevania anime doing a Devil May Cry? Wasn't maybe nice? I'm not sure. I, maybe I, I just heard remember things, but yeah, that's the style that I would like to see the Devil May Cry in. Would yeah, be. I mean the anime isn't terrible, but it's not good yeah. either. Right. Uh, and then I, and then uh, the last two ones that I have, uh, Undertale is a is a huge, still hugely popular. I think they could easily make like an animated movie out of that. And then I know we've already gotten an Assassin's Creed movie. I know it was bad, but I I I'd, I'd like to see them try to tackle. Technically, the Assassin's Creed movie was not based on any of the games. It is actually canon in the franchise. It is canon as a separate entity. So yes, you could absolutely get do pick in ours because Assassin. We said the rule of. If it isn't based on any games, and the Assassin's Creed movie was based on none. Yeah. So yeah, Black Flag is, I think, the one that they should that, do. Yeah. Still, in my opinion, the best. Pirate uh, movie, good. <laughs> yeah, yes. Pirate movie, good, so yeah. Alright. Thomas, you got some honorable mentions? I do. In fact, I have kind of two honorable mention portions. I have one portion that these have already been movies, but I would like to see other attempts or stuff that has been confirmed to get movies, okay. but I would still like to see. And then I have, like, Some that... sh- straight up never have gotten films or whatever, but I would still like to see. So, I'll start with the ones that have gotten movies, but I would like to see it done again. Another fighting game franchise, I think King of Fighters 
with the amount of with an actual big budget with a big budget and an actual like honestly I know we're tired of them but I think King of Fighters would fit really well as a cinematic universe 100% because King of Fighters is a crossover video game it's a mm-hmm. crossover between Akari Warriors and Fatal Fury oh, uh, yeah, Art of Fighting right. and all that so I genuinely think that doing that and having their big Avengers games be the King of Fighters tournaments would be really cool Especially because when you actually play the King of Fighters games, they are actually really deep narratively. So I would, I would like to see that. We have had two attempts at these at this motherfucker, and it still hasn't worked. Hitman, Age of yeah. 47. Give me a actually good Hitman movie. Yep. Like, in my mind, I think I would like David Light to direct it. I know he's kind of the go-to for action, but that's because he does good. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, I mean, anybody who's worked on John Wick, any of the John Wick directors, any of the John Wick would directors, work really that's well. True. And again, I, I mean, I guess I could have put that because they technically were either of them based on the games. Like, uh, I know Hitman Agent Forty Seven came out at the same time as Absolution, or around the same time. I think they might have been a little bit. I don't think any. I don't think either of them were actually based on it. Like yeah. they were both kind of an amalgamation of the franchise. Yeah, and I, I just like, I don't need this big epic story. Mm-hmm. Give me like Agent Forty Seven is just on a he- big assignment. Like he's trying to take out mm-hmm. this third world country dictator or whatever and embody what the new franchise has figured out having <laughs> him dress up in weird costumes and kill you in strange ways yeah like and like it doesn't have to be this big it doesn't have to be james bond saving no. the world like yes a lot of there but like have him eliminate viruses in the weirdest way possible because that's what makes the hitman fun yeah like again just have him be like he's trying to take out this dick dictator uh from somewhere and He's got to like make his way through a list the whole movie. Mm-hmm. Genuinely, you could do so much with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, yeah. That would be really cool. Again, another fighting game franchise for me. What a shock! But technically, we've never had an animated movie of this franchise released on the big screen. So I want a big budget two D animated, not two D animated, but animated like Spider Verse, Street Fighter movie. Yes. Ooh. Because I think with Spider Verse and the amount of like impact some of those hits have, especially when like they flash different colors or whatever, I think that would be perfect for any fighting game, but a specifically Street Fighter. Because even if you look at Six with all the flashes of colors with the huge hits they have mm-hmm. in that game, I mean yes, Street Fighter's never been about realism, so that really works very well. Yeah, that's why it, out of all the fighting game franchises, I think Street Fighter would fit really really well it would go back to the feel of the original game the old you know arcade games the, the yeah. kind of the feel of that movement where they're especially in a that kind of style they're 3d but they don't always feel 3d yeah like imagine imagine a spider-verse style ryu doing a hadouken yeah like a super yeah. powerful hadouken where it's like flashing black and white because it's just that strong ah it just gives me chills thinking about it absolutely this one I had on the list for a while, and then it was, and then I got reminded. Wait, that's actually being a thing. Ah, nuts! Twisted Metal. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. It's a TV show. Yeah, like I said, that's going to be a thing, so I won't spend too much time on that. But mm-hmm. yeah. definitely a franchise that could be made into stuff. I'm kind of glad it's going more TV show than movie. Yeah, I think that franchise will work better as a TV show. I do agree. There are also ones that you brought up earlier that I'm probably going to listen to this podcast and be like, ah, son of a bitch, that's what I'm saying. (laughs) Uh, Ones that haven't gotten a movie, TV show, or anything that I think would be really good. Red Faction. Yes. Very much kind of, uh, it's a very standard story, you know, rebels fighting against the evil rulers of Mars or whatever. But I think it'd be really cool. Especially because if you take the kind of destruction physics the games are known for and integrate that into some really kick-ass action sequences. It would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Oh, boy. Oh, (laughs) boy. Hear me out on this one, all right? Oh, boy. Whatever he touches isn't always turned to trash. It's not always a great movie. It's sometimes not even a good movie. But Michael Bay. (laughs) Give Michael Bay just cause. Oh, no, absolutely. You mean the game that's basically based on Michael Bay movies? Yes, exactly. So just give Michael Bay a Just Cause movie. Absolutely. You know, just go ham. Let it be like, hey, here's uh, here's $100 million. 
go nuts. Go nuts. <laughs> and just have him be like, go nuts, go nuts. Okay. And just give us the most insane action movie with explosions every second, surfing on jets and all that. But uh, yes. But I think Michael Bay does a good job directing human action, so it doesn't have to be super CGI nonsense like his Transformers movies. Because at the at the center of Just Cause is Rico Rodriguez, a human. Yeah. So I think that'd be really dope. I did honestly have that on my li- on my list, but I was like, ah, I don't know. It's 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 too fun as a, as a game for me to be like. Because mm-hmm. I would be watching it and be like, man, I want to do that. That's I fair. could just go home and do that. That is fair. That is absolutely fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the complete, on basically the complete opposite end of that spectrum. We don't have enough spy movies, because you can never have enough spy movies. So give me Siphon Filter. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Specifically, I think from the director of the newest Mission Impossible movies. Oh, uh, uh, Christopher McQuarrie. Christopher yeah. McQuarrie, yes. I think that would be the good tone to go with with that. I think Siphon Filter is a really good series. Mm-hmm. A really underrated series, so I would really like to see that as a movie. Splinter Cell, you could also do kind of the same thing with, but personally... I think Siphon Filter would just kind of be cooler, because mm-hmm. I just think Siphon Filter is a bit more underrated, so I would like to see it get a movie more, personally. I also just have more of a connection to Siphon Filter than I do with Splinter Cell. That's fair. Uh, I can get behind it, though. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Another mascot platformer that really should have something, anything, new game, TV show, give me an art book, something, Jack and Daxter. Yes. <laughs> hey, Jack. I'm not surprised it's not on... Well, I, I don't know if it's since you mentioned there. It's not on my list. I'll say that. I don't know if it's on basis. That should have been on a list. That should, <laughs> that, have been on, yeah. that should have been on a list. I was really thinking about it, but uh, it, I I couldn't put it on my list because I already have three. D. I already have a platformer on there. Mm. So, uh, but yeah, just Jack and Daxter. Give me something. Something. Please. Anything. Yeah. Anything. I would take a movie, but I'd also take a TV show. I'd take, again, art book, comic book, take out food menu with them on it. Just give me on something. That, and you know what? On that, on that similar, similar um, token. Um, oh crap! What was I thinking of? Uh, the the raccoon game, where you're uh, where you're a thief. Oh, Sly Cooper. Sly, yeah, Sly Cooper. Please give us a Sly Cooper anything. Give us an anything, Sly Cooper. We might get back to that in a few minutes. <laughs> It technically did have a little animated short, but I think a full movie would be good. Star Fox. Yeah. I think Star Fox would be uh, good. To the point where, if you want to find my Tumblr, I don't post on there that often, but uh, I have notes of what I would do for a Star Fox movie on that Tumblr. And it's not great, but I I do have notes of Mm. what I'd do for it. And yeah, I, I think a Star Fox movie could actually be really fun. Make it like the because it's because uh, I think Star, like the whole idea of Star Fox was that it was based on the on the uh, the Thunderbirds. Make it the yeah. Thunderbirds puppets. Yeah, the Thunderbirds puppets. <laughs> that actually that actually be hilarious. I would. It'd be definitely t- Star Fox. D- look with the success of Top Gun, but it's Star Fox. Yeah, yeah. I'm down. We, yeah, do Top Gun, but they're space furries. <laughs> Be great. <laughs> bit it, bit, 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 bit. Yeah. Gosh, over the radio, it's the voices, but they're like clearing yeah. it up. Yeah, like, like Peppy's like Fox. You need to do it. Like Fox, you need to get out of there. Destruct. What? <laughs> Sorry, my man. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're doing kind of the cringe pick for me. Whatever, I think it'd be cool. Bendy and the Ink Machine, but do yeah. it as a Who Frame style. Uh, Who Frame Frame Roger Roger Rabbit style horror movie. Just have the animation be kind of the threats they're fighting. And I think you could genuinely do that really well. Wait, you're telling me Who Frame Roger Rabbit isn't already a horror movie? No, it's fucking... That guy's with the guy's eyes. When I killed your brother, I talked just like this! Anyways. Intentional horror. (laughs) Intentional horror. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like I said, there were some I remembered that you guys brought up earlier but i forgot there are a lot of games that could be vid- could be made yeah. into movies I mean, I mean real quick soul caliber yeah uh, <laughs> yeah I, I i consider that a spoiler <laughs> i had a i had a couple of my arm mentions are pretty simple like soul caliber uh jack and daxter you mentioned those ones those da- absolutely should have been on the list uh i thought a little bit about uh donkey kong 
I did think for a little bit on Donkey Kong. Oh uh, man, would it be like that? The weird anime, the the Donkey Kong three D show, anime yeah, the, the, the Fox Kids, yeah, yeah. Uh, but Kong, I thought where Donkey Kong spoke and had a better singing voice in his show than Sonic has the Sonic Underground. Yes, uh, the show hey, you based take on that music. back. You take that back. <laughs> but I thought I thought about Donkey Kong for a little bit. Uh, you know. There's a couple of franchises, Nintendo franchises. You mentioned Metroid. I, I still don't believe Zelda could ever be made into a good, th- a good film. So like that one wasn't necessarily on. But Metroid, I think, worked. I think it depends on the game. Like I think Wind Waker. Yes, and it also depends on how they want to stylize it uh, and how they want to do it. I, speaking of Nintendo franchise, shit. I'm sorry, uh, Kid Icar, No, that'd be a better TV show. Mm-hmm. Like a Monster of the Week TV show. My bad. Never mind. Uh, you know, Earthbound could maybe be done. You know, it's definitely like sat down and like, oh, maybe, but like not 100% serious. Only like, if you can type in your favorite food. Yes, before. at the beginning. That's how you get your yeah, tickets. They go around with surveys. Like, that's well, how you get your, your movie ticket. <laughs> um, this tells you which theater you go to. You chose the. Um, yeah. Bioshock, I know there have been attempts and their thoughts, but it's a lot of it that I think would absolutely be made into a... I did. I almost thought about putting that uh, on this. Because initially, sure. Gore Verbinski was going to make Bioshock. Oh. Uh, $100 million. Ooh. It was the budget he proposed. Al Pacino was going to play Andrew Ryan. Ooh. That's a good and idea. the studio said, can you make it for $15 million? Um, and he said no, and so it, it <laughs> and rightfully so. That's right, yeah, rightfully. I was like, that. that's, in, that's Al Pacino's contract. Uh, but now, yeah, that's uh, Al Pacino. You'd get Al Pacino to stand on screen and read yeah. the Bioshock. We could have had a Gore Verbinski Bioshock. <laughs> no, it's, it's just it's just a let's play, but it's Al Pacino, it's Al Pacino playing Pacino Bioshock. Doing it, and you well, after the Game Awards, yes. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I was going to say you paid him 15 mil. Amazing. I mean, kind of just for bonkers sake, any, either, I would love to see either of the Nino Coonies be made into like an animated film. Both their stories are interesting. Those, would, uh, those could be there. You know, I can echo Thomas, Street Fighter... I would like a good Mortal Kombat movie. Uh, we have the 90s one. <laughs> I would like a good Mortal Kombat movie. <laughs> uh, you fucking whore. I would like a good Street Fighter movie. So there's Take a lot that of like... Back, oh. you fucking whore. <laughs> <laughs> a good uh, Dead or Alive movie. I would... Uh, the franchise that, you know, could maybe... You know, the Army Man franchise, I think, could potentially make it an interesting, maybe better TV show. But... You know, a kids' war movie. You know, everyone needs that. Uh, <laughs> Do the Saving Private Ryan scene, but because they're plastic, there's like no violence. But yeah, so, you know, I think for the most part, a lot of the movies that I want, you know, I, I've said here, I could put any Final Fantasy on the list, legitimately any of them. And hey, one spoiler alert, one is coming. Uh, I was gonna say, I'm surprised your honorable mentions aren't just Final Fantasy one. Look, Final Fantasy any of them Fantasy could be three. made in some way to a movie, and I would watch it. Uh, but I feel like I know what your number one is, but I'm not gonna. It'll be interesting. Uh, but yeah, those are some of the honorable mentions there. We'll be interested to see. Did you, I, uh, I just have to ask, did you have more and you cut yourself off because we didn't shut the fuck up? Oh, no, no, no. I really didn't have that many honorable oh, mentions. Okay. Like, I actually thought of a few extra while you were talking. I only had like four or five honorable mentions. Oh, okay. My list was only about nine or ten deep, so. Oh, okay. But yeah. Uh, Mason, number one video game that needs to be a movie. Go. All right, so I'm going to say... What uh, might be uh, a hot take? Oh God! God damn it! Why do your number ones have to be hot takes? I think, other than like some Spider Verse esque uh, a, a different, um, a, uh, other than those, I think that three three D animated movies have kind of gotten boring to look at. Oh, the, no, the, st- the style that they've all kind of gone with, mm-hmm. I think, o- other than like Spider Verse exceptions and stuff like that, they've all just kind of, they're they're all just kind of the same style to me, and I and I think mm-hmm. I'm I'm starting to get bored of that same animated style. But I think there is there is there's a tool out there that I think could that I think could revitalize. 3D an- animated movies Is in a Mason way that other than like, micro- Microsoft Paint the game. No, movie. I'm not <laughs> suggesting that. Um, <laughs> it's actually uh, uh, there's something kind of along those lines. Oh God! Uh, source filmmaker. I think source filmmaker is still a vi- like a viable filmmaking tool. I think it's I think it's very I think it's the style that it goes in is very is very intriguing. So I propose a Team Fortress, Team Fortress Two. Movie. God. 
<laughs> Look, I'd watch the shit out of it. I ain't gonna lie, I'd watch the shit out of it. <laughs> I that think, checks out. I, I think it would be incredibly fun. And the, so this, this is the this is the one that I have casted the most. I have I have I already have what I think would be the perfect be perfect for all of the for all the different characters. So for the scout, Joe Carey. For the heavy, David Harbour. For the sniper, Hugh Laurie. For the demo man, Don Cheadle. For the spy, Pierce Brosnan. For the Barnum. soldier, for this for the soldier, Jason Statham. For the medic, Matt Smith. For the engineer, he probably won't do it now, but uh, it, again, this is in a perfect world. Bruce Willis, and as the pyro, Nicolas Cage. That would be my Team Fortress 2 movie. I think it would be beautiful. My only complaint is that Jason Statham is a soldier. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. That's That would be good casting, but the soldier would legit reach out and grab huh. you by the throat if you... If you dared cast a Britism. Oh, that's fair. It's gotta be that's a pure part. Dr. Richard Jason Statham would have to be the top two person, and then the movie would have to be about him. Oh, oh yikes. Yeah. If, it, if it's gonna be about anyone, it's gotta be about Scout and uh, Spy, because those are the, the... Yeah, those are the... Those are the, the... Yeah. Yeah, that checks so, out. So, yeah, that is my... That is... I mean, have you... I'm Actually, no, wait, you know what? I changed my mind. The soldier is Ed Harris. <laughs> Ed Harris is the soldier. Have you uh, have you guys read the Team Fortress Two comic book? No, no, I haven't, but I but I know of it. It's very good, and I think doing a story like that would actually be fun, kind of a road trip, but with the Team Fortress Two mercenaries. Because, well, let's yeah. be honest, the Team Fortress Two mercenaries are fucking fantastic. They're amazing. They're, they're amazing, amazing characters. They're amazing characters. They're funny. They're incredibly memorable, and they're all distinct. Too. Yeah. So again, I just I think yeah, a Team Fortress Two. Yeah, like a road trip movie, but just with them. It'd be great. Like, the amount of shenanigans they could get into would be hilarious. And, and you know, and, and I brought it up earlier. So, like, Source Filmmaker, it's, a, it's, a, it's an old program. It's like, it's like 12 years old, I think, at this point. But it still hasn't aged a bit. Like, if you go back and you watch those, like the, like the, meet, the, meet, the, the meet the Scout, Meet the Heavy... Meet the medic. They're all. They all still look fantastic. They hold up incredibly well. There's, so I, I think a full feature length movie in Source Filmmaker would be fantastic. There's even Team Fortress Two fans who still make these mm -hmm. very long, like thirty minute animations in mm -hmm. Source Filmmaker. So okay, yeah. I think it would be amazing. So yeah, I think I think it'd be very good. Alrighty. Uh, Mason, actually, a little bit out of the box, but not quite as much out of the box as I was getting worried. As, you know, I was like, oh god, it's gonna be Mario Paint. Yeah, that's what I was, I was kind of worried. He's like, you know what? We haven't adapted a typing game. Mario teaches, teaches typing. typing. Typing of the dead. <laughs> uh, Mario is missing, but it's the the one with the like the weirdly anime. The one where Ouija comes from. You mean ho Hotel Mario? No, no, I think it's... Is or it wasn't Mario? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's Mario is Missing is where oh, is what Ouija is from. Maybe, I don't mm. know. Alrighty. Thomas. Yes, number one. it's your turn. Okay, well, for this one, it's another kind of cheat, but also not, because I doubt anything is actually going to come of these announcements. There was an announcement of a movie a while back. There was an announcement of a TV show a while back. We've got no news on either of those things, especially the movie, because I'm pretty sure it got converted into the TV show. And I didn't like the designs of the movie anyway. But whatever. Give me Sly Cooper. Hey. <laughs> There's a reason if you... Sorry to spoil. This is a, an audio medium, but Mason brought up Sly Cooper and Thomas's death glare at Mason was so evident. I, uh, I apologize for spoiling. I did not realize. That's why I didn't say shit when you were like, oh, what's the game with the raccoon? I'm like, if you fucking say it. If you fucking uh, say it. Mario 3. The two you said. Ah, yeah. uh, there you go. It was like, I was like getting very upset, actually. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sly I Cooper. I deeply apologize. You're fine. You didn't can't read minds but but yeah i again i didn't like the style that they were going for with the original animated movie so i'm not too terribly sad that got canceled but i do want something mm -hmm. sly cooper is one of my favorite franchises i love sly cooper so just give me a movie i know we brought it up a hundred times but it's because it looks so gorgeous it does just a spider-verse style 
Smalley Cooper movie, especially yeah. with the angular designs, the mm-hmm. cell shading, the backgrounds and everything. I think that would translate perfect. It would be amazing. What about live action with Nick Cage no. playing Sly Cooper? Yeesh. I would... But it's not actually, he just has a raccoon hat on. No, like, Nick Cage would be the turtle. Nick Cage would be the turtle, you're Nick right. Nick Cage would be Bentley. <laughs> Bentley, yeah, he'd be... <laughs> Checks out. No, an animated, an animated Sly Cooper would really, It'd really... Be fantastic. You can base it off the first game, obviously. I would love if you kind of skipped the first game. I know you can't, but I would like if you at least combined elements of the first and second game. Because the problem with the first game is it's very much the first game. There's a lot of things that kind of became outdated as the franchise went along. Yes. For example... That's why a Sly Cooper remake would be awesome, because that first game is a little outdated. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like, for example, Bentley, Bentley and Murray don't do shit in the first uh, mm-hmm. game. So I think that remaking it, either remaking the game or turning it into a movie where they actually do a lot, would be very good. And again, just imagining, especially a Spider-Verse style, because Sly Cooper moves in such a fluid way. Oh, like, yeah. Again, very similar to a Spider-Man. Yeah. Or even Puss in Boots in the new Puss in Boots trailer. Uh, I think he would look he would look fantastic. Even in that simply kind of as style. the mm-hmm. the movie Bad Guys. Or the Bad Guys, yes. Yeah. The Bad yeah, Guys so I think would also I, the Bad Guys might even be better. Yeah. Because they move so fluidly. Mm-hmm. They do. It has so it's such an animated uh comic book esque art style. And the comic book art style really fits Sly like Cooper, Cooper very well. So again, just genuinely I think would be yeah, actually, the bad guys is I think the perfect animation style. Because even stylistically in a genre, you could fit you can fit Sly Cooper into a couple of genres as well. I mean, yeah. there's lots of platform, but also you are a thief. <laughs> yeah, like it 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 can kind of hell. You could make it kind of Ocean's Eleven, where it's one massive heist instead mm-hmm. of a bunch of smaller ones. Yeah. Now I I don't think that'd be as fun, but you could do that if you really wanted to. Absolutely. Uh, again, I just yeah, Sly Cooper. I, like I said, I was kind of conflicted putting it at number one, so... It's what I expected at your number one, so... Yeah. I think that's the, a good call. The the only reason I was conflicted is because it did have a movie announced and the TV show was announced, and I don't... We haven't heard can... anything else from it. Yeah. We yeah. haven't seen anything else from it. Like I said, that's why I didn't feel bad. That It didn't feel that bad, because I was like, whatever. We're not hey, doing. if when you're listening to this podcast, Sly Cooper has come out, cool. It's all our doing. Yes, exactly. We, it was we, not because it was announced beforehand and we didn't fully understand it. It was all our doing. We contributed everything. Give us money, Sony. All right. <laughs> well, well, Sean. My number one. Which Final Fantasy is your number one? <laughs> I think I so, know what's So I waffled is, a bit on this. I knew this one was going to be on my list. Uh, and I, I, I sat back a while deciding on it. But recently I am, I'm going through a playthrough of all the Final Fantasy games. I am playing every single one of them. And for the first time, I fully completed and played through Final Fantasy II. Interesting. And this is a game that has a lot of problems. It's not quite uh, Legend of Zelda 2 in that, you know, they try to do everything different. They just yeah. tried some few different things. But at its base... In the previous one, Final Fantasy Tactics is a much... Uh, Advance was a very, you know, more kid-friendly. This one is not. Mm-hmm. This one is very much... You have three friends. Your main character. His love interest. And their loyal himbo. The, the, la- the girl has a brother who is missing at the beginning. And they just want... They basically... They want to become the heroes. And so they're going to go on this adventure... All while looking for trying to save kingdoms, while one the kingdom the king of uh, Palmisia is trying to basically unleash hell, legitimately unleash monsters from hell. Good lord! So there are twists and turns. You find out that the Dark Knight, who has been aiding the king, is in fact your brother Leon. The game, unlike most Final Fantasies, your party throughout the entire game is three people with a, a guest joining in at all times. A new guest. Now, mm. the theme of Final Fantasy 2 is that guest every time a guest joins in your party. Sorry, that's signed their death warrant. Ooh. Yeah, they, 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 they fall down on couple. So many, so much death. So much death in this game. Yikes. So I, I was a little hesitant initially to put this as my number one or there because it might work better as a TV show than, say, a movie. But I think because the game really is 
It is short. It is very simple. I think you can boil down a lot of it as friends want to go save, uh, want to save people. Friends try to save people, succeed. Uh, the king makes a comeback by kidnapping the princess. You go to rescue the princess, find out the Dark Knight is your brother, have to then reconvene and go and defeat the Dark Knight, and then eventually the king, who cannot control hell, eventually the evils of hell you have to defeat and keep back. Jesus. So it's a very simple, simple story. It's very short, despite the wide things of a lot of Final Fantasies. But I think as far as Final Fantasy stories, it's still early on. There's a lot of fill-in still. Uh, unlike Final Fantasy 1 and 3, which were just fill-in-the-blank characters, you know, you're all just whatever your characters are, everyone interacting. These main characters did have personalities. Mm -hmm. But they kind of fill into the tropes <coughs> that a lot of action uh, fantasy adventure movies have that these characters could easily fall into without living up, necessarily going to all the tropes that Final Fantasy would become later. So, it is my pick for uh, number one. I would love to see this move, this adapted because I think Final Fantasy II is the game that gets overlooked the most in the franchise mm -hmm. because one started it all, three and four got remade, six is considered the greatest of all time, seven might be the most impactful game of all time, and so you kind of go on and on. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm joking here. <laughs> you might... Uh, He's getting all flustered talking about his favorite game. <laughs> it's true. Hot and bothered here. Uh, but this is the one that I would love to see adapted because it is not the one. It's the one that doesn't give them much love. Interesting. <laughs> if I knew if I knew anything about Final Fantasy, I would be like, yeah, yeah, that's. <laughs> but you know. Well, everyone should play Final Fantasy because it's awesome and amazing, and uh, it's 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 great. Show me where to start, and I'll. Try. Literally any of them. They're all kind of self. -contained. They're all self-contained except for the the few sequels of each. You know, but those. Uh, Final Fantasy Nine. Yeah, you can start Final Fantasy Nine. That's a harken back to the classics. All right, and it's a great reason. one. I love the Thomas put it on there. Another reason why. But yeah, those are our lists of our top video games that we think should become movies. It'll be interesting to go back to this in like 10, 20, 30 years time and see, and see how, how many we got. As we're still going along as a podcast, very successful. <laughs> and I have a Neo Geo and a Resident Evil controller, <laughs> and I'm still screaming that my Ape Escape movie has happened. <laughs> But hey, what do you guys think? Do you have movies that you would like made off of video games? Do you think that uh, any any extra honorable mentions that we should have added in? Do you think that we're wrong? Especially maybe Thomas is wrong. God damn it. Or do you really like that Guitar Hero game that Mason made? Well, you can tell us. You can tell us what you think. Did you hear my idea for Killer Instinct? And the more I talk about how bad it would be, I'm like, oh, <laughs> don't ruin this, you son of a bitch. <laughs> but you can tell us what you think by sending us an email at bleepyouplaying at gmail.com. Send us what, uh, your information. We'll read off what we, uh, what we get uh, on a podcast. Send it to bleepyouplaying at gmail.com. If you're listening to this on Apple iTunes, give us that five stars. Put in a review, type some words, give us some words to help promote it. Spotify, hit that follow. On the other ones, follow, share the podcast, help it grow. We thank you so much for listening, and we will see you guys next time. Get good, you slut.